Closing Table Podcast. We're here to be a voice for real estate professionals and help raise the standard in our industry. We want to connect professionals by having conversations about what part each of us play in the real estate process. Our goal should always be the same, which is helping buyers and sellers get to the closing table. Uh, Today's podcast is brought to you by Providence Title, bringing excellence to each real estate transaction and the Hero Edge, helping real estate professionals realize the hero in your own story. I'm Carlos Wolven with Providence Title. He is the Kevin Harris. And today we have our special guest, Edie Leon, La Cubana. Yeah, in the house. Well, man, this is going to be a great podcast. Uh, I have a personal relationship with both people at this table, and I'm super excited to be able to bring them together for uh, what I think is going to be a very entertaining conversation. So let me introduce Edie. Edie has uh, been a real estate uh, agent for over 18 years. She's been in the real estate industry. Uh, she's been a top producer most of that time. She's helped hundreds of her clients buy and sell homes. Um, she's also not only a re- realtor, though, she actually owns her own brokerage now called Local Realty, locally uh, here in the DFW Metroplex, which focuses on her agents being the local expert for their clients. She currently has three locations, expansion on her mind, which you'll find out that's a big thing with Edie. Edie is also a real estate coach. She's published a great resource called the Leads Workshop, and she'll get into that and what that actually means for agents and also um, being able to just pour into agents. And you'll find out as we have this conversation um, about how she is able to actually do the things she does at such a high level. So welcome, Edie. Yay. This is awesome. Yeah. This is awesome. This is great. Um, so I'm glad you said yes to this podcast. So uh, um, let's go ahead and get started. So I always start the podcast when we have guests about talking about um, my coaching company, which is the Hero Edge, and we talk about being the hero in your own story. Part of being a hero, if we if we look at you know our the heroes in our industry, they all have an origin story. Most most people don't get into real estate. Most realtors that become a realtor or really any of the professions around real estate transaction, that's usually not their first gig, although, albeit, maybe not always. But uh, so let's get into a little bit. What is your origin story? Where'd you come from? What's the what's the background that made you say, yes, I want to be a realtor? Mm. So the origin story would be back when I was a kid. So I grew up in a real estate family. My dad was a realtor and then he became a lender. And uh, I had uh, real estate on one side and education on the other. So my mom has a PhD in Spanish oh, literature. Wow. My wow. sister wow. has a master's degree in education. So um, wow. of course, education was huge in my family. Yet I saw wow. 10 years and a PhD real estate license, and I looked at the income and I said, I think I want to be a realtor. (laughs) So I am one of those rare exceptions that I finished real estate school back in the day in California and uh, started working in the family business. But really, I was young and, and just starting a family. So I really didn't launch my real estate career really until I came to Dallas, Texas. So when I came to Dallas, Texas, that's when I said, okay, I got my license in like two months. And that's when I hit it hard. Um, Wow. Yeah. So I am one of those exceptions that real estate really is the only career or business I've known. And I love it. And it's going to continue to be. That That's awesome. I, I think one of the things I know about you is how detail oriented you are. Um, you're in, in the coaching space. I call People like you are very, um, you've got a lot of dichotomies in the sense that you are high energy, you're a big personality, but you're also very detail oriented, which would you say dichotomy? What? I'm a foreigner, remember? You have to to explain what that means. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He's trying to use fancy words. Using those dollar words there. (laughs) Okay. Um, All right. um, That's fine. Let's focus. So, and and because the reality is most people, uh, they have, they have uh, strengths and weaknesses. And most of those strengths, if you're a big personality and you you know this from Mm -hmm. from coaching, most people that have got those personalities, they don't always have a great attention to detail. That's not their, that's not their gift. And what I know about you is that you also have the ability to focus. You have so, and I, I think that's part of the success that I've seen you have is just not only do you attract people to you, but then you also know how to to get them to focus on on creating business and creating that life. So that's that's one of the things that I, Thank you. I, yeah, I enjoy the most about watching watching your rise, so to yeah. speak. 
I think for me, I, I do love people. So it's really genuine. I enjoy meeting people, connecting with people. I can't imagine being in an industry that people are involved. Right. Yet at the same time, I developed those other strengths that are necessary. So some people just stay in what comes natural. And to me, what comes natural is people. I love it. But it doesn't come natural. It was developed and learned and, and um, you know, uh, read about, studied, coached on, and grew as a person in those other areas. So it's not just, would you say it's a cultural thing? It sounds like you're telling me no, actually, that, that being, uh, you know, being detail-oriented or being a connector, liking people, it's something that can be developed. I think okay. that that part definitely can yeah, be yeah. developed and it's the right people, the right environment where you feel safe. Um, I think you can be a bigger personality, even if you're not naturally. And the same goes for numbers and details and, and being a business owner. That's also a skill set that can be developed. So I coach people, their weaknesses and their strengths. And I look at my mm-hmm. own and then our goal is to raise them up. It's not perfection. It's yeah. always progress. Are we moving forward? Are we getting better? Good. Love that. Love that. Yeah. One of the sayings that I have that we've said many times on the podcast already is that um, done is better than perfect. Mm. And, and you know, the reality is, is as we know, coaching, coaching in the real estate industry, um, we have a lot of agents who have big goals or they have big dreams. Uh, and they fall short sometimes because they want it perfect before they actually go into motion. Mm. And it just, I've never seen it work that way. You almost always have to fail. You almost always have to, you know, skin your knees and do all the things. And then you learn as you go. And if you learn as you go, then it will become whatever it is you want it to become, that that perfect that you want. And I challenge that by saying you learn when you go. There you go. If you don't go, you don't learn. That's why she's a coach. There's there's no point. (laughs) Yeah. So for me, I remember my first listing I didn't have a sign. I didn't have a lockbox. I didn't have a coach. I didn't go to a class that someone, you know, held my hand through the process. Uh, that was back in 05. And look at how we, how far we've come with the support as a new agent. Back then, I just knocked on the door and I said, do you need to sell your house? That was all the training I needed. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I had a license. So obviously, I knew something. So I think that's when I learned when I went. And I knocked on the door. So that's my job is to try and get agents out of the learning environment and into the doing environment, which is when they're really going to learn. You've got to do it. Love that. So so where where does that drive come from? Like who who motivated you when you first got started? Uh, So the drive really comes from being a Cuban refugee. The drive comes from leaving everything behind, Uh uh, you know, and, and... Coming over on a fisherman boat with my parents taking the risk and leaving everything behind and started from fresh from scratch. So to see their drive and their passion that we never had a day of hunger. We never had a day of not knowing like they came here and they worked and they did and they accomplished. Those are my motivators that I can see. My mom got her PhD at 45. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so some of us look at it at the age of 40 or 50 and they're like, I'm too old. I can't start a career. So my models were huge. Um, and they're my biggest support system. So they'll love this podcast. Oh, they're going to play it. <laughs> like, my daughter. Yeah. So that's there's a joke point. somewhere, a Brazilian and a Cuban sitting together. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then I also think that when I became a, my own person and left their household, um, I was a single mom for many years. So you yeah. want to talk about drive and yeah. want to talk about hunger. Yeah. When you are hungry, you do whatever it takes to food on the table. So till today, my biggest drive is my family, my children. Um, and real estate allows us to have freedom. So for me to be able to go to every baseball game, every doctor's appointment, you know, to be able to work a schedule uh, along with my business. Now it's taking my parents to the doctors. You know, it was before taking my kids to the doctors. Now it's a luxury. I can take my parents to the doctors. So that's my drive. That's awesome. You mentioned your dad was a real real estate agent and a lender. Was that here in the States or was he in the business in Cuba before you guys? No. Okay. So remember, in Cuba, only yeah. one person owns real estate. That's that it. would be Fidel. Well, that used to be Fidel. Right. <laughs> right. So when yeah. he came to America, I think one of the passions that we had was 
wow, this is the land of opportunity. You can even own real estate. So you can yeah. invest in real estate and create wealth. So that was his passion was to help people get the American dream. When you say the American dream, it's usually home ownership. Yeah. That, that ties into yeah. that. And um, I love that. So yeah, yeah, so he was, he's, he's one of those personalities with detail kind of person too. Yeah. I love it. No, that's mm-hmm. great. I got some ideas for future podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I, th- I think the past few minutes of this conversation has um, emphasized something that kind of a common thread through a lot of the podcasts that we talk about, which is um, when I was a football coach, I, I mentioned that you know, I could teach kids how to block and tackle. I could teach kids how to throw. I could teach kids how to run routes. I could teach all these skills and hone these skills that these kids had. But the one thing I could never teach as a football coach and as a realtor coach or a business coach is the hustle. Mm -hmm. The hustle has to come from someplace else. It can't come from an outside source. It has to come from an inside source. And you, the testament to what you just said is, is affirms that because, um, you know, it, when you said that when you when it's up to you to put food on the table there's no other option and i think with with realtors that's the one thing that they struggle with is finding what that motivator that flame um that's gonna that they need to go through those hard times you know i talk about that everything that any realtor ever wants or any real estate professional wants is in the big dark cave they don't want to go into Mm. and it's figuring out What's going to push them into that cave to get uncomfortable? It's what's going to get them to that point where it doesn't matter how bad it feels because I need to get to the other side of that. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that you know, obviously, you know, your motivation. You, you, you And I, I'd say that there's a lot of natural ability there, like just from how you grew, grew up mm-hmm. and all those things. But but one of the things that I've noticed as I've coached hundreds of agents is it can be developed, but they've got to find it. They've got to go figure it out. It's not something you can teach someone. Um, and that's just my personal opinion, but I've never been able to figure out how to get someone to light a fire. Oh, yeah. You, you can motivate all day long. I'm a big motivator and people see me from, 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 you know, in a big group and I can be pretty motivational. But I also know that motivation is like going on a mission trip for, for uh, people who go on mission trips. You're on a high for a certain amount of time, but eventually you come back down. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to have it. Well, and the motivator can't just be money Mm-mm. because that, that yeah. alone is not going to, is not going to no. get you there. I mean, that's why so many people, because the, the lottery don't, they just, they don't. Cause at the end of the it. day, at the end of the yeah. day, people think they want money, yeah. but no one really wants money. Yeah. What they want is what money can do. Yeah. Right. And so identifying what that, what they actually want yeah. and then money being the resource or the tool to get there. That's, I think that's where a lot of the, um, entrepreneurs and business owners, they, they miss the mark because they just haven't done that work of figuring out, well, I just want to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But the reality is once you, you put a million dollars in the bank, but that's not going to make you happy. What's no. going to be make you happy is what you do with it. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So, yeah. I love it. I love it. And that ties into why I created the Leeds Workshop. So probably the biggest accomplishment in my life was uh, writing the Leeds Workshop and then having Trek validated by certifying it with 15 hours of continued education. That to me is a big deal because Trek is the end all of what is valuable for agents to. And and Trek is the Texas real estate commission. Commission. So it's the Texas version of who does all the uh, licensing licensing and then they control the MLS and all that kind of stuff. I know that's right. So if you're watching in Brazil and Cuba, you know, I mean, it's the authority, it's the authority (laughs) over Texas real estate. Exactly. Exactly. Um, But what's interesting is, I have clients that take that from all over the country because they don't need the hours. They just need the training. So for me, I I saw that there was a gap in the learning uh, and in the classes in our industry. And that gap was people go to classes all day long. Realtors go to classes all day long, yet they don't take action. So my motto is knowledge is definitely not powerful. Knowledge is not powerful. Knowledge is the potential of power because if you don't take action, where's the power? So to know what to do and not do it is powerless. To know to do right and not do it is powerless. So the Leeds Workshop is taking all that instructional piece that we have to have, right? But where's that motivational piece of accountability and the fear behind you making those calls and getting you in the right state uh, in order for you to push through. Um, for me, pushing through is, is, is coachable. Okay. 
but it's not sustainable. And that's what we go back to that yep. deep, deep fire. So I can, I can have an employee realtor and we know realtors aren't employed. Right. So they might be in my coaching program and pretend to be listening to me and pretend to be doing the activities and acting like a good little employee. But at the end of the day, that's not sustainable. You're a 1099. Yeah. You got to put on your big boy pants and you have to take action and, and self-teach, self-motivate, mm -hmm. self-drive. Um, and it's not for everybody. It's okay to be an employee. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just going to help you find out if it's for you, I can bring it out of you. You don't, you don't even know if it's in you, but if it's not for you, there's only so much you can do. It's just, it's okay. Okay. So when it's not for you, cause I think, I think there are realtors that they just maybe never have the right guidance, but then they got to a point, they just, they just decided, okay, I, I either can afford or I'm not going to pay these dues again and I'm done. When do you, how can you help a realtor really figure out, okay, when is, when is just not my time and I, this is not the right industry for me? Oh, I love that question. Because that's what I sit down from across the table all the time. Sometimes they come to the brokerage and they're broken and they've been trying to do it for a year or two without the support, without the help, mm -hmm. yet they have the talent. Right. It's just never been developed. Mm -hmm. And I bring them in and all of a sudden, like I have two of my agents that have doubled their production since last year that came from a big brand that was not getting the love. So when I sit with somebody, I, I look at it like baking a cake. Okay. Baking a cake. I can give you the recipe. And if you truly want to bake the cake and I make the best cake in the world, I give you the recipe, you follow that recipe to the T, you're going to have the same cake that I have, right? So it's having the conversation of here's the recipe. Are you willing to get in the kitchen mm -hmm. and follow it to a T? So the Leeds Workshop allows them to say, this is a successful agent's schedule. This is a successful agent's lead generation. This is a successful agent's marketing. This is what you got to do. Here's your, here's your cake recipe. Are you willing to do it? And then the ones that actually are willing to jump in that kitchen and bake that cake, they get the same results that we all do. I it's want just, some cake now. No, I know, some cake now. You want some cakes? <laughs> <laughs> there is a birthday card out there, this is hilarious, that it says you can have your cake and eat it too. Oh. There is a cake. <laughs> This exists. Uh, insert that joke. Exactly. <laughs> Google that. Google that. It exists because I got it for my birthday. <laughs> well, and, and, and I, will, I will say to your to the Leeds Workshop, um, I've been blessed enough to be able to look through the material. <clears throat> we've been part, full disclosure, we've been part of a coaching program that we both built um, years ago. And I will say that it is one of the best um, programs out there to get an agent who is either struggling with becoming consistent or a new agent who just really doesn't know what they don't know to be able to actually within a five day time frame, right? Five days. Five days, be able to walk out with a complete plan and everything that they need to know. Not that they, that they need to know to be like a superstar, but they need to know to, to take a, take the next step. And I think that is the biggest thing is that, that, that knowledge that, that often realtors think that um, they have to have is not as big as what they actually need. Like, like you said, mm -hmm. just go up and knock the door. Well, what do you say? It doesn't matter what you say. The first step is to knock the door. It doesn't matter what happens on the other side of that because yeah. you got to get past knocking, getting the, knocking the door. And yeah. I think the leads workshop gives them that information, gives them the material that they need, has accountability around it. Um, with when, when you guys teach it. And then also at the end of five days, there's really no excuses at that point. It's either they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. That's and, it. And, and then it's being part of a uh, community that allows them to have that accountability. I think that's what um, kind of segmenting into your, your brokerage, local realty. I think that's one of the things that I've noticed as I've been able to sit in a couple of your classes and, and just kind of be around some of your agents is that there is that accountability that you provide that a lot of brokerages, uh, not good or bad, they're just every brokerage is going to be different. But I think that's the, the key to your um, brokerage is that there is that touch. There's that, that, that personal touch. You're involved. Right. It's, yeah. You're not out there, yeah. you know, on a phone somewhere and, hey, email me and I'll get back to you in 48 hours. Yeah. You're involved and your other brokers are involved. Now, if just speak to that a little bit about what your actual brokerage, why you why you created the brokerage, why you moved from, you know, a big brokerage and, and started and felt the need to create uh, another brokerage and, and really a, yeah. what I would consider a saturated market. Yeah. But there's still these pieces that are missing. So. Talk, yeah. speak to them oh, a bit. oh, I'm so excited about this because 
as an individual agent in this world of, of choices, which agents have so many choices and so many talented um, other leaders out there. There's great brokers out there, nothing on that. But I did see a, a missing piece and, and something that we've lost in our industry that I thought we need to go back to the basics. So for me, what is missing? According to Trek, I feel like when I got my broker's license, Trek says, here's the broker. And the broker is responsible to hire, train, support, mentor, agents. That's it. It's this. This is the connection right here. Our industry has gotten infiltrated with numbers and, and bringing them in and the dirty word recruit. So I don't recruit anybody. I hate that word. I interview and hire. Okay. This is not the army. We're not recruiting to a cult. We are hiring <laughs> people to do a job. So here's the broken model as I see it and what I set out to be part of the solution and not the problem. Here's the broker. Here's the current model in most brokerages. There's an office manager, there's a team leader, there's an actual recruiter or a business developer, there's a market center, some kind of administrator, there's maybe a business coach, and then there's the agent. So the agent has to go through all these things. The agents nowadays have never met their broker, were never interviewed with their broker. I don't understand holding a broker's license, how you can allow random people to put your license at risk. To me, I take my job that Trek gave me that license super serious. So I, I'm hands-on with every agent in my brokerage. I am the one that interviews, recruits. I'm involved in all the training. I'm involved in, in reviewing their contracts. Like that doesn't exist out there that your actual broker of record is the one that's looking at paperwork that if not done correctly, you could get sued or I could get sued. So I think I set out with local realty agency, not to invent Love the something name, new. by the way. That's a great name. It's a good SEO yeah. name, yes, um, local name. agents. So I set out to not in invent something new. Like most, most people want to, let's create something new and different. Let's break the model. I created local realty too. Go back to the right model, how I feel <laughs> uh, realtors deserve. Like when they pay their broker those commissions, I, I want them to feel like I'm getting value and support. So that's really my, my mindset, why I went out and broke out of the chain and, and created my own. I love that. I, I think one of the things that um, impresses me the most about the real estate industry is that you don't have to fit into a mold. And I think there is just, you know, just like there are many denominations, yeah. there are many brokers and there's different models. And I think... As because we attract in the real estate industry, we attract so many diverse people that come from different backgrounds. There, you know, anything that you can think about is different. There's probably a realtor that's that that is, is that in real estate. It fits. Yeah. And I think and, that, that there's a need yep. for for all those brokerages, and there's nothing wrong with the buffet of brokerages, just like the buffet of businesses. Um, so, and there's the right brokerage for the right person. Right. There's agents that want more support, that want less support, that are more independent. I think there's room for all of us. So I never want to put down any other brokers because we're in this together. I love them all. And I'm very impressed by what most of them have done. I, I just created my personal niche. Yep. So if, if, if there's agents out there that are attracted to that, I'm here for you. Well, and I think you come from you come from very much a mindset of wealth and, and and abundance. And the reality is, is we've had this conversation off off camera many times about there's enough business to go around, you know, and and only so many realtors, only so many brokers, only are actually going to do the work necessary to take care of their clients. And so, if you just, I always say this in my coaching group, that if you just do what you say you're going to do, you're going to beat out eighty percent of the agents out there because. Yeah. 80% of the agents don't know what to do and they are and they're not they're either not being trained or they've got the training and they're not they're not diving into it yeah. and they don't have that support that's going to be going hey what are you doing hey what'd you do today you know those kind of things and i think that um, uh, the model of a local pun intended local real estate brokerage that's focused on the agent is definitely needed and i think it's going to be a great asset to 
the DFW Metroplex and wherever else you decide to go. Um, and I think you definitely will have a footprint for, for many years to come. I love well, that. You, you just used the word respect and I, and I wrote it down and I underlined it because, uh, you know, we've talked about in prior podcasts, you know, we're really trying to put together a successful game plan for a real estate agent in 2023. And we talked about brand, social media, staying positive, learning negotiation skills, really diving into their niches. Um, you know, we talked about building a team and, and, I think it's important to actually understand and have respect for your fellow realtor and other brokers. Yeah. yeah. You know, because if you're if you're not really playing in the sandbox, if you're not being respectful and understanding where they're coming from, um, you know, then then it's not going to make it for a successful transaction. You know, when yeah. from the very get go, you're already making assumptions. Yeah. You know, uh, givers gain in that world. Give them respect uh, to earn respect. Uh, and I think that's big. That's huge. You that's know, huge in all of it. Realtor to realtor, broker to broker, right. um, um, client, mm-hmm. uh, re- fiduciary res- um, responsibilities. Um, I feel like there is such a thing as win-win. And that for me really is when you walk out of it, being able to sleep at night, knowing that you behave professionally, you put your client's needs, or in my case as a broker, it's my agent's needs before your own. And, um, and having that work ethic everywhere in every area yep. of your life. I think that that impacts you. And I love attracting other people who feel the same and, and view life the same way you do attract others. So, um, yeah, it's, it's great to be what, and if you don't attract them in the other transaction on the other side, you can convert them. Mm-hmm. So sometimes by you stepping yourself up in a deal to get to the closing table, That's okay, it. Um, it is it can make or break a deal. So I think coaching agents to de-escalate crises, emotional, like there's a lot of realtors out there that get overwhelmed and they take things personally. Mm-hmm. And, and instead of walking away and saying, okay, let me put myself out of this equation and let me do what's right for my client in order to get to the closing table and negotiate fairly and professionally. Well, and sometimes picking up the phone and, and hearing people's tone of voice, we're so easy to just shoot a quick message, right? A quick email and you know, as a, as a foreigner, the funny thing is my dad used to type emails to me with all caps. That's just how he's always done it. That's very and aggressive. It, <laughs> but you know what? It's not for a lot of countries. And I finally told dad, I said, why do you do this? You know, because here in the United States, that just means you're you're mad. You know, and I had to educate. So really, it just go, comes down to sometimes one yes. word, one punctuation, something that sometimes it's just get the phone. Hey, can we have a good conversation? What What is it going to take to really get this transaction done, right? Yeah. What do we need to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get the calls from all the agents having panic attack about deals, right? Oh, the inspection, oh, the appraisal, oh, the title. Um, and of course, having Providence title, be able to have that piece of the puzzle as a professional title company that you can count on is huge because title will destroy deals. Oh, yeah. I have had agents take listings and 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 work with buyers in texas is a community state and there's a titles pop up and things pop up so a a great uh resource is definitely providence title for us um but secondly is taking them off the ledge talking to that agent down putting things in perspective Mm -hmm. teaching them hey we're gonna be problem solvers so right now forget about the problem Let's focus on what's the solution, how to fix it. Forget about the appraisal. Who do you have to call? What do you need to do next? Forget about the inspection and the foundation and the world is ending and, and the, the deal is falling apart. These are my daily calls. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. okay, no. Do you have a checklist? Yeah, yeah. Who do you need to call? What Got needs it. to happen? Yeah. How do we negotiate through this? Take it yeah. down a notch. And realtors count their... They're chickens before they're hatched. Right. They're, they're can, right. They've spent the commission check right. before the, the closing table and then one little thing yeah. happens and emotions right. go up. So right. having your state under control yeah. and under check yeah. is I huge. I can speak from experience. We've had transactions fall apart at the closing table. We've had transactions fall apart between the closing and the funding. We've had, you know, listen, there's so many moving pieces. It's it's incredible. And oh, I think yeah. that's... I think that's <clears throat> You know, we keep saying this. That's right. why this podcast was created exactly. is to get these professionals to a table right. so that we can all understand the best practices around every every piece of the transaction. And I think what I'm loving about the content that we're creating here is that 
you use the word excellence. I know in the Providence um, moniker, they use the word excellence. I think for us uh, in this podcast, it's about bringing in those excellent conversations that most realtors, but definitely other real estate professionals often don't get to hear because they're not, they're not in the room when those conversations are happening or they have to get into the transaction to hear how this is set, settled. And, and I love the fact that, that now they kind of get behind the curtain a little bit and they get to hear someone like you, a professional who's been doing this for years, who's a broker, who's a very high level agent, very high level broker, very high level coach, and get to hear how you think about that transaction. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes they don't get, you know, when you're, when you're in the day to day and you're in the grind, you're worried about the next thing. And if that next thing doesn't have that piece in it, you may never even hear that. Mm -hmm. So being able to, to sit you down and just be able to pick your brain and put it on tape and and be able to have realtors listen to this and go, Oh, I never thought about that. I I never thought about it from that viewpoint. Well, I think there, that's what's and there's great. something that a lot of people don't think about as, as, as far as being a professional. You, did, you mentioned about hiring versus recruiting, right? You hire people. Mm-hmm. So what do companies do when they hire somebody maybe sometimes after six months or a year? What do they do? Mm. What do they do? Yeah, like and you, as, you as the business owner, uh-huh. you know, if you hire somebody, you bring somebody to your company. It doesn't have to be a real estate agent. Companies in general, they hire somebody. What happens after maybe six months or a year? What happens? Well, for me... Quarterly, okay. okay. We we That's do even better. evaluation. That, amen. That you, that, evaluation. That, that, there's that word. You know, part of being a professional is self evaluation Not only evaluation feedback from your employer, right, or yeah. your broker, yeah. but even your agents. Yeah. I mean, your past clients. It, you need to be able to be confident enough on what you produce to go to a past client. Say, listen. Thank you for allowing me to be a realtor this past year. Is there anything that you think I could have done different to make the transaction mm. better? Mm. Right? You, you have yeah. to feel comfortable enough because that's the only way you're going to grow. Yeah. You need to be able to accept feedback from everybody and you yeah. need to ask for it. Some of our best closers, they meet with their clients, you know, at least once a year. Hey, listen, it, just when you think that everything is great and you're handling with excellence, sometimes there's, there might be, you know, maybe the team grew and now you need more bandwidth. You need to have another assistant. You might be there all, all of a sudden my database blew up to 200. I can't handle it. Right. So, yeah. so what feedback do you give what kind of evaluation do you recommend or do you do with your agents? So I love this because on our office meeting this Monday, we did full-blown evaluation. It's a 20-point checklist from where you are from 1 to 10. Love that. On um, from a business planning, time blocking, marketing, lead generations, presentations, negotiations. Like I have a whole checklist and I had them all right. Every year I do this, um, where you are, right? And our goal is good to great. So I have some agents that are actually good, right? They'll be like, I'm a seven, I'm an eight, right? So they're like all proud. I'm like, that's fantastic. What would you need to do to take it to a 10? And then they're just like, okay, I thought I was good enough at good. No, 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 I don't want you to be right, good. Right. I want you to be right. great, right? And then I actually had one agent that uh, put 10 and I go, oh, that's fantastic. I mean, what else? What's greater than 10? 10 plus. So if you need me to go. <laughs> so to right. me, when you put a 10, that tells me you think you're fantastic. Yet I believe we're never a 10. Right. We're always striving to be 10 plus, plus, plus yeah. and how to get to that. So that's just a sample of what I do from annual to quarterly and hopefully uh, the majority of my agents are attending our weekly and monthly accountability and Love growth. That. So self-evaluation, like you said, yeah. I evaluate myself and that's a skill set. So how are you not partial to, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. That's so hard. So you have to teach yourself to look at your own production, your own numbers um, and say, okay, where could I be better? How could I do better? And so I teach the agents to do that for themselves as business owners. Um, and then I help them through it, you know, cause they're learning. So it's oh, hard awesome. to, to be in the, in the forest, right? I love it. Yeah. No, I think that's great. How many years into real estate did you tell yourself, okay, I think I got this. I think I feel comfortable enough. I can make a career out of this. Um, I think my first month when I closed four deals in a state that I had knew only wow. one person. Wow. I think my yeah, first that, started, that I was uh, not expecting that. <laughs> that, that By the way, it. I just met Edith today. So that is not what I was expecting. Wow. 
Okay. Yeah, that's a shot. So for me, um, okay. yeah, when when I, there was failure is not an option. Right. So when right. I said, I have to do this, I'm going to do this. And I actually listened to my leader. My okay. leader said, Edie, you need deals, do this, this, this. Wow. And I was so dumb. I, I love me a dumb realtor. Dumb realtors <clears throat> obey. They listen. They just go out and they have no fear. They're like, jump off a building. Okay, Edie. And then they come back, you know, with three right. commission checks, right? right? So for me, I was like, okay, knock on doors. Okay, do postcards. Okay, make calls. Okay, I just said, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do it. Yeah, 30 days later, I had four deals. Three of them were cash. Wow. Um, and one was a loan. So I said, okay, if I just do what a master says to do, you know, black belt. You want to be a black belt, you train under a black belt. I've had phenomenal black belts um, that I've learned from and coached with and grew. So I quickly learned that model that you don't have to invent or come up and be all creative. No, you just do what the masters are doing and you get the same results. I love it. I love it. It's the it's the uh, four scump effect that yeah. we that we talk about all the time. <laughs> it's the when someone tells you to do something that's been there before you, you all you do is go okay and just do it. You you don't ask why. You don't try to reinvent it. You don't try to analyze it. You just do it because that's what that's what that's why they're in your life is to take you to that next step. And and if you know if uh, uh, a black belt came up to you and told you to do it a certain way, you would not question. Right. You know, well, are you sure that's the right hold I should do? Is that, that's the right pattern because he can destroy you, right? But yes. in the in the same in the same way, when someone is willing to pour into you a little bit of their knowledge and a little bit of their pain that they've gone through to get there, our all I, we should always come from curiosity and go, okay. Yep, that's what we're going to do. And I love that. I love that. It's a success it's story. It's a great about analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Your mom ever tell you you're too smart for your own good? Yeah. Right. Well, I have a lot yeah. of way too smart realtors. They think they're smarter yeah. than me. They think they know more. They think this won't work. I won't try it. So they're too smart for their own good. If they just sit under a master and follow through on those activities, they will have the same results. Every single one of our podcast guests so far, we've, we've used or at some point the word basics. You know, come up. I don't understand. Even me, I've been doing, have been in real estate now for 17 years. Why is it that people continue to try to find other ways to do something? Oh, it drives me crazy. Same year. So, it drives me crazy. You yeah. know what? So chances are two years from now when we're doing new podcasts, we're going to be talking about basics. Yeah. Maybe maybe at that point they're going to listen. In the world of football coaching, it's the fundamentals of blocking and tackling. I know. Okay. I do have at least one one final question on, on my end, uh, just because sadly, a lot of realtors live paycheck to paycheck. It's just, it, it's a sad reality, right? No matter how much we try to help them. So in those instances, they're working, they may be working one single transaction or maybe a couple and they're dealing with just an incredibly difficult client. And it's just, they're just spinning their wheels, right? Maybe that one buyer that just have looked at 50 properties now. So when, would you tell your agents to, you know, at what point do they just need to fire their clients and move on? Mm, okay. <laughs> or do you ever fire a client? You know, is, is that even possible in the real estate industry? Ah, uh, okay. So to be honest with you, I don't fire a client unless they're dishonest, okay. unethical, cheaters. Right? They're, they're, they got another hot realtor on the side that they're working with. <laughs> I don't work with cheaters. Yeah. Um, the rest of the people, it's, it's not about hire or fire. It's about what's right for them. Okay. So sometimes I fire myself and yeah. I say, this is not the right time for there you, you to buy. Or you do not have the right resources at this time. Or your house will not sell at this price point. Or if you can't do an ins uh, the inspection in the roof... You're not going to sell the property. Yeah. So I think there's more firing yourself than there is firing clients. Love that's that. rare. Love the, yeah, yeah, love that. And that's just good advice. That, yeah, that is, that's, that's awesome. Just true representation. Fire yourself if it's the right thing for your client. Yeah, no, I, and I think that is the responsibility of a realtor for sure because that's the fiduciary, at least in Texas, it's the fiduciary is, is to do what's best for the client. And sometimes it's not the pleasant thing, but it's the right thing. Right. Now you want a juicy story of firing a client? Come on. Come on. We might we might finish on that. So so yeah, it's juicy. No, I've had two juicy stories. One was a seller who actually patted me on the booty. That's a fire. Okay. <laughs> That's a fire. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and then two, I did have a seller who was verbally abusive to his yeah. wife going through a divorce and he thought 
that he could be verbally abusive to me too. And that's a fire. So other than that, the rest is just another day in representation and business. Mm -hmm. That's how extreme you have to be for me to fire someone. I love <laughs> that. Well, hey, I want to, I want to end with a question that I, that I want to ask every guest. So, so just for a little fun, what is one thing, uh, Edie, that people don't know about you or that most people don't know about you that you'd like to put on this podcast? Oh my goodness. So we were talking before we started, which is most people see me at a party and they think I'm either wasted or on some hallucinations because I will be up on the table dancing. The truth is I've never been drunk. I've never done drugs. I've never smoked. All this that you get is all natural. <laughs> <You're> drunk, <laughs> drunk on life. I am drunk I, on that's life. That's awesome. Drunk on God, drunk on people. That that's is, awesome. That is my passion. So that's yeah. awesome. Well, I can guarantee you, uh, you're the only one at the table that said that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Edith, we want to just thank you for joining us today. Uh, if somebody's trying to get a hold of you, what's uh, what's the best place? Or just share your yeah. Instagram, your Facebook. Uh, let let our viewers know how yeah. to get a hold of you. So you can find me at localrealtyagency.com. Remember, when you're looking uh, for a local agent, a local expert, it's a local realty agency. I'm your broker. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, we're on Instagram, local realty agency. So uh, I look forward to our next next podcast, hopefully with much, much more. And of course, if you're interested in the Leeds Workshop, any agent from any country around the world could use the Leeds Workshop because it is the fundamentals. And, and how do they get that? So if you go to my website, they can sign in to the Leeds Workshop. That's gotcha. also part awesome. of it. Awesome. Yeah. I love it. I'm Carlos Woltman with Providence Title. He is the Kevin Harris. How, uh, how, can, uh, how can people get a hold of you? Well, um, first, I want to make sure that if this served you, if it spoke to you, please, please, oh, yeah. please leave a comment um, on whatever podcast, wherever you're seeing this or listening to this. We, we live and die by uh, five-star reviews, so we'd love to have a five-star review if this spoke to you in some way. Um, also, if you want to get a hold of me personally, you can find me in Facebook at the Kevin Harris. You can find me on Instagram at the Kevin Harris one and you can also uh, find me at thekevinharris.com. So... Really? Absolutely. Make sure to join us on the Providence Edge private Facebook group. Just search for the Providence Edge and we definitely want to hear your comments there. So we look forward to seeing you at the next closing table.